Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's look at Keynote export options. So once you are done with your Keynote presentation, you may want to export it into a different format for various reasons. Let's look at all the options. So let's take a look at the export options. Go to File, Export, and you can see there's a variety that you've got here. The first one is QuickTime. And this will export the entire presentation as a special QuickTime video. You notice that Playback uses a set to Manual Advance. So you can see right away it's not a typical video because it will actually wait for clicks and respond to arrow keys. So it's actually an interactive video that will only run in the QuickTime player. So you have to have a QuickTime for Windows if you want to actually play this on Windows. You'll get something like this. It's a QuickTime movie. It opens up in the QuickTime player. You can see it there. And I can click and advance and even advance with some of the inner builds for a slide. And I can use the arrow keys as well, which I'm doing right now. And I can actually use the back arrow key to go backwards through the slides. So this is perfect if you want to present on a Mac but you're not sure if the Mac has Keynote or not because you know a modern Mac will have QuickTime 10 and all this will work. So the next option we have is export as PowerPoint. Now this will create a PowerPoint document that can be opened up in PowerPoint on Windows or Mac but there's not 100% compatibility. For instance, let's take a look here at the PowerPoint version and you can see that the fonts are a little different and I'm also missing some of the animations uh, that will happen that are specific to Keynote. Even some things like some transparency uh, isn't quite working in PowerPoint. So you get something that will definitely work and something that probably you could clean up with just a few minutes worth of extra effort but uh, not 100% compatibility. The next export option is PDF. And here you can basically save your presentation as a PDF file. Of course, it doesn't have any of the animations, but it should look just like your presentation. You can also include slide notes, uh, and you can uh, choose a bunch of other options here. Now, the reason you want to do this is perhaps to provide people in the audience with a handout perhaps electronically or to have an electronic version that you could refer to that has your notes that you can look at on your iPad or iPhone or laptop uh, before giving the presentation. Next we've got a series of images. So you can export every slide in your presentation as a series of images in different formats and use this for a variety of things. You could uh, just simply present the entire thing as a simple slideshow in just about any piece of software. Even on Windows you can just present it as a folder filled with images and go through them. Now the HTML option is very interesting because it also creates a series of images but creates an entire HTML wrapper around it. So what you get are is a website that looks like this. And here I'm looking at it in Safari and I can actually it's it's full size so it doesn't really quite fit here but I can click and it will actually flip through the different slides. Each one of these is a different picture and there's some JavaScript to uh to show it. And at the bottom here I'll show you there's actually controls I've selected. You can select to have them or not to go back home or to flip through the slides in the presentation. So you could take your entire presentation and actually put it on a website. That way anybody can take a look at it. Now it's not really text there. It's a series of images but it does look great. And you could also use this as an extreme backup when you're giving your presentation. If you're not sure what capabilities the machine you'll be presenting on has but you know it will be hooked up to the internet you could always just simply go up to it, launch the web browser, go to where you know the HTML version of your presentation is and present right from there. You don't even have to have the presentation with you. Now last we've got the special iPod export. So if you do the QuickTime export you end up with a special QuickTime movie that has controls in it. You can advance or go back. These special QuickTime movies only run on Macs or Windows with the QuickTime player installed. If you want to actually play it back as a video on say an iPhone, an iPod, or an iPad then you should use this option which will give you a flattened plain video. You can set it for fixed timing so the slides advance say once every five seconds. So this is a feature that I don't expect to be around much longer. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the QuickTime feature um, perhaps using fixed timing uh, it completely replaces it and you can create a nice quality version here rather than using this version of creating a movie. 
So which export options do I use? Well, I use pretty much all of them. I'll export a PDF and put it on my iPad and have a backup copy on my laptop so I can review it on the way to the presentation. I'll also export it as HTML, stick it up on a web page just as an extreme backup, and I'll export it in some other format, usually PowerPoint just in case, or also a QuickTime movie just in case, and have all these versions. It only takes a minute to do them all, and I know I'm prepared for my presentation, even though in the end I probably will just present in Keynote. You can also use these export functions to go beyond making presentations. For instance, if you want to make a simple, quick website, you can simply make it in Keynote and export it as HTML. If you want to make an interesting video or opening or closing sequence, you can export it as QuickTime. If you want to make a PDF document, you might be able to actually make something in Keynote that's more interesting than what you could make in a word processor. So I hope you like this look at the export options of Keynote. Till next time, this is Gary with MacMost Now.